Hi, I'm glad you're back. Let's get right in to the Word of God today. I'm glad you're here. I have been reading in the book of Psalms, and I want to read Psalms 44 to you. And it's labeled, Wake up, Lord, we're in trouble. Don't you just, even with that, don't you just love that? Wake up, Lord, we're in trouble. Okay. Um, how many of you have felt that? Wake up, Lord, because I'm in trouble. Lord, I need, I need, I need your help. Amen. So in verse one, it starts off, God, we have heard about all the glorious miracles that you have done for our ancestors in the days gone by. They told us about the ancient times, how by your power you drove out the ungodly nations from this land, crushing, oh glory to God, crushing all of their strongholds and giving their land to us. Now the people of Israel covered the land from one end to the other, all because of your grace and your power. And verse three, our forefathers didn't take the land by their own strength or their own skill or strategies, but it was through the shining forth of your radiant presence and the display of your mighty power. You love to give them victory, for you took great delight in them. In verse 4, you are my God, you're my king. It's now time to decree majesties for Jacob. Through your glorious name and your awesome power, we can push through to any victory and defeat every enemy for I will not trust in the weapons of the world I know that they'll never save me only you will be our savior from all of our enemies all those who hate us you have brought to shame verse 8 so now I constantly boast in you I can never thank you enough pause in his presence and think about that so I want to point out here in verse in verse 2 where he says they told us about the ancient times who are they well, their ancestors told them you know um words being carried down from generation to generation talking about how the Lord had brought them out of out of all these circumstances right so they told us about the ancient times, how by your power, glory to God, by your power, you drove out the ungodly nations from this land. Doing what? Crushing, crushing the strongholds, crushing all their strongholds and giving the land to us. Glory to God. So it's saying here that who, by God's power, he crushed all of their strongholds. Amen. And it's also saying they didn't get the victory by their own hands, nor do we get the victory by our own hands today. Trying to do something in our own power, trying to get victory in an area of our life by our own, our own strength. You know, that's relying on your own self. That's not relying on God. He wants us to come to him. He wants us to come to the throne room of grace boldly and let all of our petitions be made known. He wants us to, to lean on him and allow him to bring the victory to us, right? So we can look at Gideon and all the, the armies that he had. Well, they were going to be relying on their own strength. And God, it was the Lord who was going to bring the victory. Same here in verse 2 in Psalms 44. This is the Passion Translation. It says that we heard from our ancestors how by your power you drove out the ungodly and that you crushed, Lord, you crushed all of their strongholds and giving the land to us. And, you know, it's that even in, even in us and our walk with the Lord, that land, it's like, 
instead of us striving to for us to get the victory we are going to the lord and we're saying lord i need your help to get the victory whatever it is that you're wrestling with or dealing with in your own life we have a tendency of wanting to take care of it ourselves and the lord is saying to us i don't want you to handle this with your own your own hand come on your um your own uh, strong spirituality, all the work that you've put into your life spiritually and and knowing the word that you're you're going to bring yourself out of this situation. We're reading here in Psalms where it's saying by the Lord's power that he broke their strongholds, not just broke them, but he crushed the stronghold and gave them the victory gave them the land of what they were looking for. Amen. And so, and, and also in Psalms, it says, this was, this is looking in the past. Lord, this is when we can see that Lord, you know, our ancestors that have gone now, they told us how you parted the Red Sea. Um, they told us how, uh, you defeated, uh, Pharaoh. They told us how, you saved Noah and mankind by putting it on his heart to build a boat. Um, they they told us how um, how uh, the plagues came upon Egypt to to wear them down for the Israelites to be set free. So you're going back and you're looking at the things, all the things that God has done, and even in your own life, you go back. You mean whatever situation that you're dealing with today. You can look back and you stop and you can ponder and you can look back and go, Lord, I remember when you did this for me. Lord, I remember when you just set me free from this. And Lord, I remember when you healed me from that, you know, and and Lord, I know that you that that you love me and that you care about me. You know, it's like David. It's like you have to stop and encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. And now I'm going to go on to verse 9. It's talking about, uh, wake up, O Lord, we're in trouble. Amen. So it's about the present time that they are in here. And it says, the present time. But you've turned your back on us, and you've walked off, and you've left us. You've rejected us, tossing us aside in humiliating shame. You don't go before us anymore in our battles. Verse 10, we retreated before our enemies in defeat, for you are no longer helping us. Those who hate us have invaded our land and plunder our people. We could see that today of the things going on in the world. We see that happening in Israel, don't we? Those who hate us have invaded our land and plundered our people. Verse 11, you have treated us like sheep in the slaughter pen, ready to be butchered. You've scattered us into the four winds. You've sold us as slaves for nothing. You've counted us, your precious ones, as worthless. Verse 13. You've caused our neighbors to despise and scorn us. All those around us mock us and curse us. You have made us the butt of all their jokes, disliked by all. We are the laughing stock of all the people. Now, Think about this in verse it's verse 9 through 14. This is kind of how you feel when you are in battle. This is kind of how you feel when you're when you're when you're in um uh when you've got something going on in your life. These are the things that you hear. What do you hear? God's turned his back on us. Yep, he's walked off and he's left me. You hear that from who? The accuser of the brethren right? Or your own self. Amen. But you've turned your back on. Oh, he's turned his back on us. He's walked away from me. I'm here all alone. He's rejected me. He's tossed me aside. I feel humiliated. I feel shame. He doesn't go before me, my enemies, to defeat my enemies. He doesn't go before me in my battles. I'm alone in this battle. I'm going to have to fight this battle alone. We retreated from our enemies in defeat. That means my enemies are winning over me and I am defeated. For the Lord is no longer helping me. 
Those who hate me have invaded invaded my land. They've invaded my life. Everything is falling apart. They've plundered everything that I have. I've lost everything that, that I've worked for. Lord, you treated me like a sheep that's going to a slaughter pen. I'm ready to be butchered. You've scattered us to the four winds. You've sold us to slaves for nothing. See, these are the accusations that when you're in the midst of a battle that you hear, he's not, he's not there. You, you were the one that uh, did this to yourselves. Do you think he's going to come and, and help you now? It's only by God's grace and mercy. Amen. And then so, so we're, we're, we're hearing of, 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 what it's like when you're going through a battle and what you feel uh, that that's what the enemy is wanting you to think that you're all alone, that God is not there to help you, that somehow, somewhere you have so offended the Lord that he's not going to come to your aid. How do we know? We, we, we can take verse 9 through 14 and write a big L on it. That is a lie. It, that is that is a lie. You know, this is what you're feeling inside. This is the attack that you're experiencing over your own mind, right? And so, and then it goes on to say through verse 15, there's no escape from the constant curse, the humiliation. We're despised, jarred, overwhelmed by shame, overcome by every turn, by our hateful, heartless enemies, despised, all of these, we have not forgotten you. So he's saying, in, this, in the midst of all of this that's going on, we're saying within ourselves, Lord, I have not forgotten you. We have not broken covenant with you. We have not betrayed you. Our hearts are still yours. Our steps have not strayed from your path. Yet you've crushed us, leaving us in this wilderness place of misery and desperation with nowhere else to turn. Death's dark door seems to be the only way out. In verse 20, we had forsaken your holy name. Wouldn't you know it? You'd be right in leaving us. If we'd worshiped before other gods, no one would blame you for punishing us. God, you know our every heart secret. You know we still want you. Because of you, we face death threats every day like martyrs. We are dying daily. We are seen as lambs lined up to be slaughtered as sacrifices. And then in verse 23, it's called the future. So wake up, O Lord. Wake up, Lord God. Why would you sleep when we're in trouble? Are you forsaking us forever? You can't hide your face any longer from us. How could you forget our agonizing sorrow? Now we lay face down, sinking into the dust of death, the quicksand of the grave. Arise, awake, and come to help us, O Lord. Let your unfailing love save us from this sorrow. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word here in Psalms 44. And Father, I pray for your presence now. Father, let, let your hand be on this um, time of discussion, Lord. Let it pierce through our hearts. Give me words to speak, Father, to bring encouragement to you, the people that you love and the people that you care for. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And so I want to talk about this passage because we're talking the you know verses one is so it's verses one through eight is talking about the past it's talking about the things that god had done for the people of israel and how god had brought them out how god had crushed their enemy how god had destroyed their enemy how god had given them this land flowing with milk and honey where there was great promise there and so this is so so the ones right, this is someone younger looking back over the generations and going, I heard, I didn't experience it, but I heard that this is what you did, right? And then they're in their present situation and they're feeling 
that God is nowhere near them, that God is not there for them, that God is not helping them, wondering, where are you, Lord? And it's saying they've not broke covenant. I've not broke covenant with you, Lord. I still desire you with, with all of my heart, right? And it says right here, God, you know our every heart secret. You know we still want you. And that's in verse... 21 we still want you i'm still longing for you so why am i experiencing these things that i'm experiencing right i want i want to be um i want to be free from these things that that i'm experiencing right and i know that because we, we read there in the first part of it that they didn't do it by their own hand but it was by the by his power you did it and you crushed all the strongholds amen and so that's where we come to today we want the lord to crush all of our strongholds and what does that mean all those inward things in you that that no one knows about the struggles that you deal with in your own life that nobody knows that nobody hears those thoughts that you have that you have to contend with right and so now I want to talk about condemning, all right? And because we know the the one who condemns is the accuser of the brethren. So it's the accuser of the brethren we know is 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 Satan. And who else condemns? We condemn we can condemn ourselves. We could condemn someone else. Um, you know, it's that you're going through something and you said, you know, I felt like I should have handled that better than I handled it. Right? And, um, and, and therefore, when you do that, then, then you actually get an unforgiveness toward your own self. You know, and I've had I've had instances where the Lord has said, "Tina, I need you to forgive yourself." And it's like I should I, you know, I was like, "Lord, I should have handled that better than than I had handled it." You know, um, here lately I've been praying, "Lord Jesus, please help me in my love walk. Help me in my love walk. Help me, help me, help me to 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 be kinder. Help me to be more loving." Right. And so I wanted, the Lord laid it on my heart to look up some scriptures on condemning. And I've covered this in Bible study um, in the past. It's like you've got two things. You've got condemning and then conviction. And there's two separate. It's like the Holy Spirit does not condemn. The Holy Spirit brings conviction, right? And so there's two different things. So let's look at the definition of condemn. The definition of condemn is express complete disapproval. Some words that go with it is criticize, attack, denounce, deplore, blame, slam, hammer, lay into, blast, slash. Sentencing someone to a particular punishment, especially death. All right, and then... For conviction, it's like the Holy Spirit convicts us. And convict convict means it's a feeling of guilt, remorse, or regret. And being feeling convicted brings us to repentance. Like Lord, I'm Lord, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't want to behave that way. Lord, I ask you to forgive me, right? And also, Lord, I ask you to help me get victory in my life in this situation so I don't have to I don't have to come back and I've covered it in Bible study. I don't have to come back and and repent. I want to turn my back on it. That's what repentance is. Is I'm turning my back on it. And you know, and even with Psalms 44. God is not wanting us to fight the battle on our own or in our own strength. He is wanting us to go to him. He's wanting us to ask. And I have, I have been asking, I've been bombarding him with 
a lot of questions, you know, and asking, asking it. And it's, and it's like, um, and, and because I've been asking him questions about some things, it's that I'm expecting answers. I'm, um, I got a, I got a, I got a breakthrough, um, today with the Lord. And it was, um, so simple, but he's like, Tina, you know, Tina, I love you. I don't condemn you. And, and when, when he said that, I just felt a weight lift off of, you know, just contending with things and dealing with things and each, every one of us have it in our life that we're, that we're contending with. Right. And it was, it brought me freedom and it brought me victory. Just hearing that, hearing that from him, it brought me victory because then he put it in my heart. I will fight your battles. I will fight your battles. You do not have to fight your battles. Your job is to come to me and ask. My job is to bring the victory. That is complete dependence upon the Lord. So I want to ask you, what are you contending with? What is going on in your life? And you know, a lot of times we keep things inward to ourselves. If you remember the last video I put out, it's like when I, when I walked away from the altar and I walked to my mom, my, and my mom asked me, he's like, well, Tina, are you okay? And I was like, oh, mama, yes, I'm fine. But you remember I shared, I didn't share with her the inward struggle that I was going through. I um I kept that inside, not like I was hiding it from her, but it was very private. It was very, very personal, right? And and the Lord knew what it was, and 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 then here, you know, I got I got the I got the victory, I got the breakthrough, didn't I? And so it's the same way with you. What what are you inwardly struggling with? So my challenge to you is for you. God already knows what's there, right? It says here in verse 20, 21 of Psalms 44, God, you know our every heart secret. So he already knows, right? He already knows what you're struggling with. You're not, you're not hiding anything from the Lord. He already knows. He already knows. And not only does he know, he knows that you need help with it. And he knows that you got to come to him and you have to ask him because he does not go against our will. He gave us that will, right? So, but he needs you to come to him and, 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 and bring it to him so that he can help you. You know, cause a lot of times we, we want to like, I'll get it. I'm going to get it together. Or I'm going to, you know, and it's like, no, 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 no. Even, I mean, yes, we stand on the word and we say, Father, your word says this, 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 this. But we are to go and ask, Father, what's going on? Father, what is this about? Father, where does this come from? Uh, what's taking place? You know, and it's like, even if some of you are dealing with health things, what what's going to happen to me? Is this going to be a bad report? Am I going to have to do warfare over this? Am I going to have to stand on the word? Um, you, you know, you get diagnosis. It's like, am I going to have to do this? Am I going to have to do that? And you, so it's like, you take those questions to the Lord. Well, Lord, what you going to do about that? You've just taken that off of your shoulders and you've laid it on the on the altar to the Lord. Lord, what are you going to do about that? Because I'm your daughter or I'm your son. I'm your child. And this is the report that I'm hearing. So, Father, what, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? What do you want me to do? Ask him questions. Take it to him. Ask him questions. Father, what do you want me to do? What is my step? You know, when I had... Uh, the cancer scare a couple years ago, I was like, my heart was, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know where this is going, but I do know this. I need your presence. If I'm going to have to walk through this battle, I need your presence with me, Father. Amen. And then he laid it on my heart to go somewhere where I would be in, um, in that type of presence that I needed, that tangible presence of Lord and brought healing to me, right? So it's that relying on him for everything that we need. 
that that is what cultivates that relationship with him that's where you can go back to psalms 44 and go i heard stories from my ancestors how you sent an angel in a church service and plunged that angel plunged its hand into my great great grandma's stomach and removed cancer i heard that story in my family bloodline lord are you going to are you the same god today as you were then amen i am right then we go I shared it the last time i did a video overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony amen jesus has paid the price for it all and so this is part of cultivating our relationship with the lord we need to ask him questions amen and we know this in psalms 44 that the past was all the wonderful things the Lord did. The present was the battle that I am in today. Amen. And then it's the in the in the future was calling out calling out upon the Lord, right? Lord, where are you? Lord, awake. We're in trouble. Father, I, wake up. Wake up, Father. I'm in trouble. I don't know what you want me to do here. This is what I'm hearing. This is what they're saying I need to do, but I'm not going to do what I think. That, I'm not going to listen to what they say I need to do. I need to hear from you. What do you want me to do? And it could be something that's so small to something so great that's going on in your life. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. You know, no matter what's going on in our world, no matter what's going on in your personal life, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Look for opportunities to be Jesus' hands and his feet. Look for ways that you can share the gospel. Amen. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, I ask you free us from that condemning spirit ask you to free us from that condemning voice. Father, I ask you to strengthen us on the inside that we will not condemn ourselves. Thank you, Lord. So I want to read these scriptures. Isaiah 50, verse 9. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who is he who condemns me? Behold, they will all wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them. Glory to God. Psalms 34, 22. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Come on. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory to God. I got my, you got your refuge in him. Amen. And so what does that mean? He's going to take care. He's going to redeem me from this situation. Amen. He's going to redeem me from this situation. Amen. Then Ze um, Zephaniah 315. The Lord has taken away his judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You will fear disaster no more. Wow. Zephaniah 3.15. The Lord has taken away his judgment against me or you. He has cleared away my enemies. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I want to live on this earth with the enemy having nothing like Jesus said. Enemy has nothing in me. I want to live that way. This that The enemy has nothing in me. Nothing in me. Amen. That the Lord has cleared away my enemy. He doesn't get to speak. He doesn't get to speak into my life. He doesn't get to try to affect my life or cause chaos in my life. The enemy is defeated. No, Rasande, I stand there. Osha, to say, Adareatai, the Iraria Soto Kurandari, Namishatai, the Holy Ghost likes that. The Holy Spirit likes that. That my enemies are cleared away. I declare my enemies enemies are cleared away. Come on. I declare my enemies are cleared away. All my enemies are cleared away in Jesus name. Glory to God. That's a shouting scripture right there. What? The Lord has taken away his judgment against me. Glory to God. He has cleared away all of my enemies. Whew. 
Thank you, Jesus. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in my midst. You will fear disaster no more. You will fear disaster no more. The spirit of fear is gone from you. There is not going to be disaster in your life anymore. The Lord has... <laughs> has cleared away all of my enemies and I will not fear disaster any more. I will not fear any report that comes to my ear. I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but he's given me a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. I will fear no more the disasters of the enemy. I will not be afraid about a report a doctor gives me. I will not be afraid in the mighty name of Jesus. Fear of disaster is removed from me in Jesus' name. Glory to God. John 8, 10. Straighten up. What? Jesus said, straighten up. What? Yes, Jesus said in John 8, 10, straighten up. Well, who is he talking to? He said to the woman, woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? Remember the woman that was caught in adultery and they brought her out and they were going to pick up stones and they were going to throw and Jesus spoke to them. He who was out sin, throw the first stone. And they all dropped their stones and they walked away. And then Jesus said to the woman that's bowed down on the ground, thinking she's fixing to die, says, straighten up. I take that. Straighten up. How many times have you heard your parents when you grow up? Straighten up. What do you do? Well, you straighten up, right? Jesus said, straighten up. Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? In the verse 11, she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on and sin no more. This is sin. She was caught in sin. What did he say? I do not condemn you. Wait, so when I'm in sin and I feel condemned, that's not the Lord? No. Nope. Who is it? Me? Myself? Or my enemy? Because what does the Lord do? He brings conviction. Holy Spirit is tender and soft. He speaks to you. Hey. And you melt. Forgive me, Father. So what is Jesus saying? He said, woman, straighten up. You're, those that have come to condemn you are gone. Glory to God. Amen. And he said, I don't condemn you. See, Jesus could have threw the stone because he knew no sin. But he says, I don't condemn you. And he says, go from now. Go and go. And from now on, sin no more. Amen. So that's where we are. The Father doesn't condemn. So if you're feeling that sense of um, you know, we know in, in Romans 8, it says, therefore, therefore, it is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so there, we we don't walk in condemnation. But have you caught yourself? You know, it's a, it's a tactic of the enemy to condemn you for something. You feel weighted down. Feel like God is far from you. You feel like you can't hear the Lord. Lord, where are you? Lord, where are you? Right? We just read it. You've turned your back on us. You've walked off. You've left us. I'm feeling condemned. I feel condemned. I feel rejected. I feel tossed aside. Right? I feel humiliated with shame. Father, where are you? And I'm feeling condemned. I'm feeling condemn just con condemnation of condemning. Right? And it's like you, you're no longer helping me. And and Lord, I can feel I can feel that uh, that I that I'm being handed over to 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 be slaughtered, right? And it's like no, He doesn't. Our Father, our Lord, doesn't operate this way. He doesn't condemn us. Jesus telling the woman straight up in sin, woman, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more, right? And that's where we are. Go and sin no more. Do not let yourself be condemned. Don't condemn yourself.
And don't allow the enemy condemn you. What's going on in your mind? What's going on in your thoughts? You know, what are you, what are you thinking about? So, and it's, and it, it is our, our job to keep the mind of Christ. When the negative thoughts, I mean, um, Paul said, whatever is good and lovely of good report, think on those things, right? Don't, don't sit and think on the negative. Don't sit and think on doom and gloom. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to think on whatever things are good. Good reports in Jesus' name. Well, what's a good report? By his stripes I am healed. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus went about laying hands on all who were sick and they recovered. So I say, if you're sick in your body today, I say be healed and behold in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is attacking your body, I bind it right now and I command it to go from you. And Father, I pray for your healing power, your healing hand to rest upon this individual right now. Bring complete healing into their body. Father, I pray restoration into relationships that were not supposed to be dissolved. Restore, bring restoration back into this person's life in the mighty name of Jesus. For this, uh, I bind the, the um, uh, what are my words coming to? Lord, what is that? Um, a depression. Father, I bind the spirit of heaviness that's affecting their body and their chemical balance right now. I bind you, spirit of heaviness, and I put on a garment of praise on you. I wrap you right now in the mighty name of Jesus in a coat, a garment of praise. And Father, I pray for praise to well up within this one, Father, that they begin to just praise you, Father. I ask you to Put a song in their mind, Father. That they'll just start singing that song, Father. And lift them up. Lift them up. Lift them up in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mo me la cosete. Break it la la ma cosete. Ye la la cosanda la ma co. I declare freedom. I declare freedom. I declare freedom. I declare freedom. Ala rio soto kuma tarsai kuma toshite boreke teke momba kasai tai de la 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 y'all bear with me. Korai brete kese to korepa tai shandala. I break the spirit of pornography over this one in Jesus' name. Be free from pornography, Father. I ask you to wash their mind of all the things that they've seen, all the pictures that they've seen, Father God. Ale kona kama satai abote kema toko shoto breke te kola nama I bind that perverse spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. You go from this one in Jesus' name. I hope you guys are okay with this. Iko brete kose komanta kaseta onono mako brete te ono kuna ayoshatai breke te tayo kushite da na niato breke no la mai kusundere elala na na mako to bela la niato rete ke I pray for doors open. Open that no man can shut in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for promotion. I pray for job and opportunities to open for you. I pray over your holidays that the Lord will guide you and direct you where you need to be and what you need to do. Glory to God. I pray over your finances that there'll be more than enough to take care of everything that you need to take care of for the holidays. Glory to God. I pray that your joy may be full so your joy may be full in the mighty name of jesus lift it lift it lifting lifting in jesus name lifting in jesus name why because the joy of the lord is our strength glory to god praise the lord jesus father i thank you for that for the words that you've given me tonight. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. You are so good to us. You are so good to us. I pray for those of us. I pray for your loved ones who do not know Jesus. 
I pray that God sends a labor in their pathway. I pray the blinders will fall off their eyes. I pray that the enemies would be crushed according to Psalms 44 too. That you, Father, would crush all the strongholds over these loved ones or friends, Father, that do not know you. I pray for the, sh the, the, the um, that, uh, uh, those scales to come off of their eyes, Father. That speaks to them in their ear. That says, Jesus is not this. And this isn't real. And that's not. I bind the lies of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let the the Romba Briasi, the rain of Agamaya Shote, the rain, Father, Ikoshataya Koto, Lelanio, so let that rain come down, Father. Glory to God, and may a Shandelekete, let the rain come, let the rain come. Rera Rio Soro Bakaya Sela Lala Kote Komataya, Lela Rio Sila Lala Kode Lala Rai, let the Lala. Oh, glory to God that the powers of darkness can't stand it. Praise He called the night of Sunday that the rain fall on every person listening, Father. A washing away, a washing away of all these things that we've had to contend with, all these things we've had to contend with, standing in faith, standing on the word. But let a washing Maya kusandari a Washing down, washing down in Jesus' name. Free every the whole okay, my side, their whole household, free of all demonic activity. Your whole household, your where you dwell, where your where your shelter is, to be free from all demonic activity right now in Jesus' name. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over their dwelling place, over their dwelling place. Glory to God. If God said, man, I want to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Glory to God. Don't you think he wants your own dwelling place, your own shelter flowing with milk and honey? All goodness. Glory to God. I call everything out of the corners and the darkness and the crevices in your home and in your house in Jesus' name. Right Rise up, Pikai, Kumorete, rise up, Pikachande, and be who God's called you to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. I thank you, Maya, so, Buriko Repa, Saitai. De la lona no mo kushete, maria sote, corete la loma. Glory to God, yes, Father. Give us a pool of refreshing water to splash and play in, and be refreshed in your presence, Father. Now, Father, I ask for your presence to go 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 forth. Now, I feel you so strong, Father, and I thank you for that. Thank you for your presence. Whew, thank you, Korika Masai, Kursanda Rebikete. And Father, I pray for your presence to go out to those that are listening. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of praying in the Spirit. When I'm praying like that, the Holy Spirit's praying through me the perfect will of God for you who are listening. Glory thanks. Just say thank you, Jesus. I don't have to understand, but I say thank you, Jesus. I've been saying this. Lord, I give you my yes. Say that with me. Lord, I give you my yes. Because whatever it is, I know I, I know it's going to be good for me. And I know that it's going to be good for my family. So I give you my yes. Say, I give you my yes, Lord. Whatever it is, I give you my yes. Amen? Say, I do. I give you my yes, Lord. Whatever it is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. I know it's going to be good. So I give you my yes. Amen? Glory to God. Well, wow. sure. Wow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you got questions, put them in the comment. I have to ask. If I don't know the answer, I'll find the answer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I encourage you today. Be loved and be blessed. Amen. And I also wrote down some notes. Uh, it's been on my heart and I've done some of this, but it, I have, I've not put it on YouTube. Um, but um, I, I, I love the Passion Translation. Uh, and I love I love how the word is expressed. I study out of all the a whole bunch of translations, but I have it's been on my heart for 
for a good long while now to do some um, Bible reading from from the Passion Translation and put it put it on this YouTube YouTube from the Passion Translation and put it on the YouTube channel here. If you don't want to listen to it, you don't have to listen to it. But I love listening. I love listening to the word. And um, and so um, I'm, I think I'm going to do some some videos and put those scriptures out on it. And um, but anyway, so you guys be blessed and hope to see you soon. If I don't see you soon. You have a blessed Thanksgiving and let's take time to be thankful. Thankful. What are you thankful for? Thankful for my health, thankful for my relationships, Thank, thankful that I still have my mom, and thankful for my husband, thankful for my children, thankful for that grandbaby, the grandbaby I have, amen. I'm thankful that I have, um, it's rainy and, and uh, cold here in Florida right now, and it's like I'm thankful that I, that I have a shelter over my head and it's warm, glory to God. Thankful for that, thank you, Lord, amen. Um, so just be thankful. Amen. Love on those that wh whomever you're getting with and just love on them and, and just s simply saying, I, you know, I just want you to know I love you. Amen. It makes a difference in somebody's life. Amen. I right. love you guys. Be bold. Be blessed. Amen. Bye. I love that. Straighten up. Straighten up. Straighten up. Okay. Straighten up.